Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to be talking with you about another pro tip. So, the pro tip today is how do you check to see if you have a piece of mild steel or high carbon steel if you're working with scrap steels. So this is a fairly simple method. It's a really common method that most people check uh, the quality of their steel, whether they've got a high carbon steel or a lower carbon steel, and it's just as simple as doing a spark test. But the problem with spark testing is how do you know, how do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you do in fact have a high carbon steel? So we've talked about, and you've seen in the past, you've probably seen some literature on it where you'll see like, oh well, you know, it's the sparks, the little firecrackers at the end, and the more of those, the higher the carbon content, and yada, yada, yada. And the less of those, the, le the least amount of carbon content. But it's very hard to see this in actual use or practice. So I've got a couple of samples here. I've got a hammer here that is made from 1095. Uh, uh, just a little small hammer, a little reject hammer here. And I'm going to spark test this against this belt, same belt. I have a factory made hammer that you can buy from a Harbor Freight as a control as well. I have a piece of standard mild steel that I know that I purchased brand new. This is just plain 1018 mild steel. And then last but not least, I have a section of rebar. Now this section of rebar is the one in question. I have been told that this is high carbon steel. So we are going to give it a little spark check and see how it compares to the others. So I'm going to move the camera down a little bit so you can watch the sparks as they come off here. And then I won't be talking, but I'll put up here in text, I'll put up right in here in text, what the material it is that I am checking and spark testing. You should also be able to see that in video, but I will take and put it up there and then we'll see how this goes. So as you can see, my tin, this hammer here that I've made is about the same spark test wise as what this hammer here was. Uh, they were almost identical in sparks, the amount of cracklers at the vo in volume. So I can ascertain again that this hammer here is probably made from a very similar steel as this hammer here. Um, you know. Basically put, this is a factory made deal, this is a um, homemade deal. Once again, I bought the material for this, so I know what this material is. I did not buy the material for this, as this is already a ball peen, so now I know that these are very similar, obviously. You do have to check the stuff that you get from Harbor Freights and things like that, because sometimes they are not made of good quality steel. They're just case hardened. So you may want to check some of your tooling on that. I have run into that as a problem. As you could tell with just the simple 1018 or medium carbon or low carbon steel, if you will, just your standard, your standard structural grade steel, it had really straight streaks of sparks with a very few little cracklers at the end because it does denote that it does have a little bit of carbon in it 
but not enough to really count. And then this here, this is the big surprise of them all. This is rebar. You never know what you're going to get with rebar, but I was told by a guy that this is comparable to 1084 to about 1095, somewhere in that range. And this was the guy who took and gave it to me. Now this is a structural rebar steel of some kind. From what I understand is it's meant to be put in high tension type concrete situations. Uh, again, all I know about this is what I have been told, which, you know, you can weigh in on that however you will. But this had the most amount of sparks out of them all, so I would assume this to be closer to around a 1095, just because I've ground 1095s before, uh, which is pretty insane for just a piece of scrap um, steel laying around, right? Just a piece of rebar. So spark test your steels, do some testing on them if you're not totally sure or you're not convinced by the spark test or your own eyes. Cut a little chunk off and harden it in water. Uh, see if it cracks or how brittle it gets. Analyze the grain structure on it. Is it coarse? Is it fine? Um, you know, does it get hard? Will it skate a file? Those sort of things, doing those little checks will save you a lot of headache if you have an unknown quality steel that you're working with. Uh, it just takes a little trial and error to get that figured out and you know you can use some junk steels at a reduced cost versus having to spend the type of money to buy a full 20 foot length or buy drops off of a 20 foot length of good quality high carbon steel. Now if you're doing this as a profession and you want to make sure that you get the right steel for the right job, you're making hammers for somebody, you're making punches or tooling for other people, don't use mystery steel use quality steel that you've bought with your money that you can ascertain from the factory that it is exactly what it's supposed to be. So this way you can follow proper heat treating and hardening practices for that material. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a like. Let me know what you're thinking of these pro tip series in the comment section down below. And as always, God bless you and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.